What's up, everyone? It is Brendan here with What Were They Thinking, here to talk to you once again about two pods a day. As we said before, January and February, every day of those two months, uh, two pods a day is going to bring to your attention two indie podcasts that you may not have heard of uh, or been able to discover on your own. But we are bringing awareness to that for you. Well, I'm not. I, we're just part of it. I don't want to take any credit for this. This is all uh, This is all someone else's venture. Um, two pods a day. Great campaign. Part of it. Follow it. Two pods a day on Twitter. You can find it on Facebook. Fucking everywhere. Just do it. Listen to new podcasts. We're in there somewhere. We'll be there in there at some point. But uh, lots of great shows, I believe, uh, at the, the time of this recording, so this might be inaccurate, but they've done about six days, so about 12 podcasts. So you're going to get 60 fucking podcasts, 60 that you've never heard of, and that you should listen to. Give them a chance. Enjoy. Live your life. Anyway, um, yeah, thanks. Now enjoy following episode. Ishihiro-san. What is it, Takahashi? I've got this great idea. Uh, I uh-huh. feel that that our uh, that our ancient culture has been slighted by this new uh, boon with these ninja turtles over in America. So slighted. Every time I go out in the street, I feel more and more slighted. Right. So what I'm thinking here is that we can get these um, uh, these radioactive adolescent reptile turtles uh, with the ninjas. Uh, yeah. To uh, explore more of their ancient Japanese culture. Oh, I like it. I like it. So, Produced by Japan or America? Uh, you know, I, I think it could be a joint effort. Okay, okay. Uh, this way we get we get a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. You know, it's like, it's like a combo uh, over at uh, Sapporo's uh, Fine Dining. I, I, I love this stuff. I love it. Oh, I, I love it. it. I plots for it every single time. <laughs> so, so, what I'm thinking here, Ishihiro, is that uh, we have these um, uh, these adolescent uh, ninja-type uh, reptiles travel back in time to ancient Japan, and they won't be ninjas, uh, but more samurai. Okay, okay. So, it's going to be like... It's going to be like Shogun meets Saturday morning cartoons. That's a great idea. Can I input one thing? Oh, please. That's what these meetings are for. Okay, you you know how the other the other movie they got that Jim Henson guy, whatever his name was. Oh, yes. Uh, he's he, the, with the puppet guy there with the Kermit and the thing. Yeah. Well, I figure with this one... We don't have to use that guy. He's he's expensive. We can get this other. I know this great guy. You remember Marty? Oh yes, uh, uh, um, um, Marty. Uh, what was his uh, Marty? Um, oh, I can't remember what was Marty. his name. Um, it was Marty something. Real catchy uh, name. Uh, it's uh, Skorsky. Skorsky. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't. I'm, uh, well, we'll, we'll we'll just stick with Marty. <laughs> Marty is easier, but. <clears throat> you remember how he did the uh, he did the song for us for the way back, right? Uh, yeah, for the what was it the uh, the garbage pail kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So what he could do is he's got this effects company. It's called All Effects, mm-hmm. and uh, they basically they do all the effects. That's a, that's a pretty and handy name. They'll do the movie for the same price, oh. so we're not saving any money. But hey, what do you know? Whatever, we'll just not use Jim Henson. Who cares? Oh, well, you know, the, we won't have. To, there'll be less branding, uh, and I'm sure that his uh, his quality of animatronic uh, puppets uh, are going to be just as uh, just as good. I'd say better. So I think if we take these animatronic puppets that with the with the adolescent reptile ninjas, turn them into samurai that time travel, uh, and then release it wide to the world. That's when the money rolls in. You know when I pick a movie That's when I'm on to pressure now The question always comes back to me What were they thinking now? Welcome, everyone, 
to a new episode. Actually, the first episode of 2018. Yes, baby. First new episode All of 2018. All acquaintance be forgot. There you go. Don't no, know keep going. I'm the rest it. of the words. <laughs> they and all acquaintance be forgot. I'm podcasting with nerds. <laughs> this is the whole episode. Just keep going. <laughs> uh, yes. First episode of 2018. First new one. Uh, what were they thinking? I am Brendan. I'm Nathan. And we have a guest in the studio today. Mm-hmm. Dame Malcolm Wallace. Really? <laughs> really? Uh, you said it didn't matter. No, yeah, I did. That was my mistake. You thought we weren't going to do it, and we did. No, I assumed you were. So, oh, okay. Malco's kind of our, our resident Ninja Turtle expert. <laughs> yes. That's one it, word for it. Takahashi, is that you? He's <laughs> your hero, San. What are you doing here? How did we get in this, what are we getting this freaking podcast? There's just so many guests on this podcast. <laughs> oh, God, this is loaded. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So we are talking today about uh, the movie that nearly killed a franchise. Just about. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Yeah. Not Turtles in Time. Oddly enough, uh, with the collection that I have, it actually has Turtles in Time stamped on the DVD. I think mine does too. That's crazy. Yeah. So is that that must be like a, a, a post VHS world decision, I guess. Because yeah, yeah this was just uh, it was just Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles three. There was no uh, subtitle to this at all, and the reason why it gets kind of lumped in with that Turtles in Time thing was because of the video game that came out with the same name. Mm-hmm. That was Teenage Mutant Ninja um, Turtles four, wasn't it? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I could be. Mistaken. I, I want to run. I want to run some numbers by you guys here, just to get an idea of. Uh, where we're at with this this franchise, okay? Okay. <clears throat> so the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a mod- pretty modest budget of thirteen million dollars. Yep. It, at the box office, it makes two hundred and two million. Be- huge hit because it was really good. Yeah. Huge hit. Second one, uh, twenty five million dollar budget, so it went up quite a bit. Unfortunately, the box office was only about seventy eight point uh, point six million. Okay. Um, but it made I, double its budget back, so it's yeah. considered a hit. It, it it definitely made more, yeah, it made quite a bit of money. Um, quality wise, I think it's a pretty big step down from the first one. Uh it's a step down in regards to the, uh, I guess the uh, the action and the grittiness of it. Because if you watch that first one, it's it's very very similar to the earlier Eastman Laird yeah. comics. Like it's darker. And uh, the second one is definitely more in line with the Saturday morning cartoon. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I mean, even, one of the things about so much the so one... they well the second one they barely they, they didn't even use their weapons. Yeah, that was a, that was a censorship thing where they basically told them you can't use the weapons hardly at all. Yeah, that's just bad. um. So those are the first two. The third one. Now I'm not saying this was a failure because the budget was 21 million. Uh, box office forty two million. So it made double its budget back. It, it made me. double its budget, but holy shit! Though though that's a that's a, a, st- a climb downwards from yes. the first one. They, that is a uh, some of my money was yeah. included in that one because I paid theater money for this. <laughs> Man, it would have been twenty million nine hundred and ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety dollars if it wasn't if I for hadn't you. Been there, that's right. <laughs> Damn you, Nathan! And I bu- <laughs> hey, I tried to help. The, the, even my my theater money couldn't couldn't help propel this thing to another sequel. Hell, the uh, I'm the, happy for that. The cartoon itself took a sharp nosedive after this one came out, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's. Yes, I was gonna say, like you know, we joked about the begin at the beginning about it killing the franchise, and I mean, it kind of did for a long time, but it, people seemed to not realize that it it still did make quite a bit of money. Um, well, I mean, now the British it's a version... Ninja Turtles movie. I mean, the friggin' thing is, uh, it's at the time it was a license to print money. Yeah, exactly. It's our it's a proven franchise. You have to really. I feel like if they had done a fourth one immediately after that one, it would have tanked hard. You have to get Joel Schumacher involved too, in order to really, <laughs> really make a, a, a franchise take a nosedive. Turtle nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Consider they're not mammalian, does, that would have been interesting. Yeah. Why doesn't Superman have a sewer? <laughs> I think I would pay good money to see that. 
Uh, I would want Joel Schumacher's Turtles. <laughs> uh, good lord. Oof. I don't know. <laughs> Turtles and Robin? No. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the thing about this too, uh, in regards to the weapons, apparently in the British version, the original British censored PG version, they, they also took most of the weapons out of this movie, which makes me think, how long was it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and the funny thing was, with the... Um... Well, with the turtles over in England, they weren't the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They were the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Oh, yeah, oh okay. Right. Yeah, because they would, they didn't want to, uh, they wouldn't let them include the name Ninja. A, a lot of the stuff from the cartoon where they were using the weapons was heavily edited. Uh, even in uh, in North America, when the cartoon it came out, which was like you know 30, 30 years ago this past September. Yeah. Uh, the Foot Clan soldiers were made into robots, so the turtles could have something to kill without actually, you know, murdering people. <laughs> yeah, there is actually, funny enough, there is some murder in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the last little thing I want to say before we jump into the movie, because there's a, there's going to be a lot to talk about. Um, Corey Feldman is back in this movie. Yep, I was so uh, happy doing the voice of Donatello. <laughs> Here's the thing. Apparently, uh, he basically the studio called him, and they felt bad for not asking him to come back for the second one because he was right in the midst of his issues with drugs. Um, one of the times he had issues with drugs, just the one, and he eh? <laughs> yeah, just one of the many times. And uh, he said, "Yeah," and they said, "So we want you back for the third one." And he basically said, "Well, I want more money to come back." And they kind of backtracked and said, "Yeah, but you know." You were in rehab, so we're still only going to pay you fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> he made fifteen hundred dollars for this movie. Now, to be fair, I mean it is a voice role, but that seems awfully low. Uh, I don't feel that uh, Corey Feldman's star was at its zenith, where he could dictate a huge uh, payday. Consider they've already proven, hey, you can be replaced. We'll just get the guy who did the voice in the second movie to come back to have better continuity. Hey, I was happy that Corey Feldman was back. I was happy, too. It's good to see the guy get work, but, I mean, you know what? When you get too big for your britches, you got to be taken down a peg. That's just how it is. I guess I, I guess this was 93, so, yeah, Feldman would have been pretty low down the totem pole by this point already. Yeah, he would have been doing uh, direct-to-video movies like Rock and Roll <laughs> High School Forever. Hey, he was no Corey Haim, though. Come on. <laughs> Corey Feldman, you are no Corey Haim. <laughs> Oh, well, let's start this Turtles movie, folks. Japan, 1603. Because that's what every kid wants to see when they go to the movie theater to see the Ninja Turtles, a, a fancy historical piece. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before I see the Turtles dancing around, do, using their weapons and stuff, I want to start off in feudal Japan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, so... And it, did you find it <laughs> yeah. odd or interesting or intriguing whatsoever that um, a Japanese people from feudal Japan spoke clear modern English to each other? Yeah, I didn't. I never noticed that as a kid, but now I'm just thinking, how is that even possible? <laughs> it makes no yeah. sense. This is a big thing we talk about a lot on our show um, because a lot of the bad movies we've done, we've talked about, have some of them have at least. You know, even Pearl Harbor, the Japanese people were talking, were speaking in Japanese to each other. Yes, that's the thing. The people in this movie now, yes, they're now the the basic plot here is there is um there is an English an English dude and he wants to sell the Japanese army weapons. Mm-hmm. Now I understand if he's talking to the emperor and the emperor is speaking in English to him, but we have Japanese people <laughs> speaking in English with each other. I and <laughs> there, I guess there has to be some allowances made that this is a kids movie and you don't want some, Mm -hmm. you know, four and five year olds going to the movie, uh, for the Ninja Turtles and, you know, not being able to read what's going on on the screen. But it's, it's inexplicable though, because sometimes they, there's a few scenes where they are speaking in Japanese and there's no subtitles and it's just meant to like, be like, Oh no, what are they actually talking about? But like, the logic is ridiculous because why wouldn't they just speak in Japanese the entire time? Well, there's also a, there is a, a brief explanation. It, it's even heard kind of off screen. Donatello starts to give the explanation yeah. as to why they'd be able to speak English. And then they cut him off. But you're like, oh, shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you How and your fancy you book learning. Logic. <laughs> Donatello trying to introduce logic into this movie and the other <laughs> turtles shutting him up pretty much sums up this movie. Yep. <laughs> yep. 
So, yeah, Feudal Japan. Um, we don't get a lot right off the bat. Just the guy with a uh, a, a gross-looking scepter. <laughs> Let's just say it. It, look, it I don't know. It, it's, look, it's like a shitty prop. Yes. <laughs> it's a pretty shitty prop. But it, 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 it's and... something that would have been easy to reproduce if you were making, like, say, a toy line. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Right. Wait, you're, you're not saying that <laughs> the things were created in this movie to make toys are you no. listen ishihiro son we can make toys with this thing <laughs> where do they come from what they... <laughs> can you lock that door <laughs> but yeah uh we don't get a lot of it but then uh we quickly go to the present because it's time to watch the turtles dance because that's again the, the, another the, good way the, to start the turtles. A turtles movie yes yeah. line that, dancing that with turtles. a uh <laughs> that, that that hurt you that hurt me the start off watching the movie, them dance? watching the turtles dance with their weapons. It's ridiculous. They went, at least they got to use their weapons. This is true. What? Why not start with just like a random fight scene? Like just have them fighting. Just have like, them fighting some crime in New York at the time. Yeah, uh, does something. that make sense? Well, actually, it's 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 right. that is kind of Not funny bad. because they make a point. Raph makes a point. He's really pissed off that nobody knows about them or appreciates them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. For them, that actually that scene would actually drive home that uh, that feeling for him even more so if he was they were stopping like you know a street gang or or a, a couple of muggers or something like that, uh, and then to have him complain you know I don't know why we do this we don't get any sort of recognition for it that actually would have made it just a little bit better I think yeah yeah something right like <laughs> d- dancing dancing right off the bat. Um... <laughs> The 90s, line dancing was a big thing. The first... Yeah, and yeah, they're line dancing. (laughs) (laughs) The the big thing is, people will notice right away if you watch this movie, the turtles do not look the same. No. no. Um, They look horrendous. The the, the (laughs) spots that they put on them and everything, I was like, that's... You don't know. No, you don't need that. And they're just in certain areas of the body, too. Yeah, and the, the teeth. Oh, yeah. I could. Oh. There were times I just could not get past the teeth. It, it, Wait, how about when ugh. Leonardo smiles? Yes. Yeah. See, that is that is nightmare fuel. Too, too I, many teeth. I couldn't focus on anything else when they were talking. All I could do was focus on the mouth and just try and figure it out. Yeah, and they got teeth of a, a Julia Roberts proportion. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like, there's so much. Like, I understand their voiceover, but there's so much ADR. In this movie that was added... You could tell it was added at the last second. Because there's some points where the mouths don't even move. Mm. Like, all the one-liners, you can tell they just, like... Those are like, well, this, you know... This scene is feeling a bit flat. Maybe we record, like, four lines in a row. Do a bunch of punch-up. That way everybody can get their shit in. (laughs) Oh, there's so much punch-up in this movie. Like... I hope the guy who wrote all the punch up deserve he deserved a screenwriting credit because <laughs> <laughs> it's almost the entire movie. Get him into that writers guild. You know what? I I actually have a quick question. We sk- we kind of glazed over the Japan stuff, but okay, the emperor's name is uh Norinaga. Uh, yeah. Is that supposed to be a play on Noriega? I don't think like, so. Yay to na. Well, I don't I the Noriega thing would have been like back in the the late eighties, so I yeah I know, but it feels like they just changed Noriega to Nori Naga. <laughs> I don't feel this movie is that clever or witty. <laughs> well, I gave it more credit than it deserved, I guess. Yep. <laughs> but April uh, April O'Neil quickly enters the scene. Paige Turco, of course. Yes. Um, Returning was in the as second April, one, but yeah. not the first. No. Yeah. Judith. Hogue or Hwag or I don't know how her name is pronounced. Hwag, Hwag. She was yeah. like, I remember actually. I can't remember. Yeah, that. she. I, I remember that was one of the things when I was a kid. I didn't feel she looked April enough. No, no, she did not at all. Which one are we talking about? Judith. The original one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think like honestly, she's far from the worst thing about this movie. Like she, she does fine. Actually, I, let's I, I, when they had. Paige Turco as as April in the second movie. I was like, I, I'm okay. I was okay with that as a kid. I, yeah. I found she closer resembled April than than the first one did. I think it was a hair thing because in the first one, uh, the the lady who played uh, April had big frizzy hair, yeah. and uh, mm-hmm. it, 
Paige Turco's is a lot is a lot flatter and sits closer to her head, uh, so she looked more like April than the other one did. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I don't head. remember. Yeah. I don't remember the first one real well, but like I, I was glancing through it there recently because just because I really wanted to compare the turtle to the turtle costumes, <laughs> oh. and uh, <laughs> yeah, April. It, yeah, she didn't. She didn't look like April. Like I had to actually stop and listen but to the dialogue. You want to like, know? Oh, what, she's supposed to be April. You okay. wanted something funny. Uh, <laughs> we're talking more about the first one than the third one at this point. But <laughs> that's right. <laughs> she actually looks like April from the comic book. Yeah, because in the original comic book, April had this big frizzy hairdo. So as a kid. She didn't look enough like April to me, but now that I'm looking back and seeing what April looked like in the original comics, she actually looked more true to what April would have looked like in the books uh, for the movie. Yeah, but the one from the second and third looks more like the April from the cartoon. cartoon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So did the cartoon come between the first two movies? No. The car- two cartoon came out first. Came out first. Uh, there, there was a comic book hit. They turned that into a cartoon. Cartoon came out in 87. Uh, okay. And then the first movie came out in 1990, I believe. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because the second one came out in 91. Yeah. And then this one was 93. And you want to... So, funny thing, uh, I <laughs> the first uh, first Ninja Turtle movie, I saw the first showing here uh, at Parkway Cinemas. Uh, the second one, I saw on the second showing, so the, the 9 o'clock show uh, for Parkway, at Parkway Cinemas. And the third one I saw on the first matinee, which would technically be the third showing yeah. at Parkway Cinemas. So I saw them at the, the <laughs> in sequence at the, in their showing time as well. Excellent. Yeah. Kind of clever. Actually. You knew what you were doing. <laughs> no, I just couldn't get a freaking ticket. My parents wouldn't let me go, go to the nine o'clock show for Ninja Turtles three. So <laughs> they, uh, they knew so... how bad it was going to be. <laughs> no, they, they my, to be fair, my dad probably thought the first one was going to be terrible too, because nice. you know it's a kids thing. Now, April, uh, April O'Neil, like I said, like I said, she enters the scene, uh, the sewer, and she has uh, flea market gifts for everyone. <laughs> the best kind of gifts. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So Michelangelo gets a lampshade. Well, while he was spelunking for pork rinds. You know what I thought he said? Just... I thought he said, I'm spelunking for porno. That's what I heard the first time. I had to rewind it and listen to it again. <laughs> and I was well, like, they are that teenage is mutant ninja turtles. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to hear turtles talking about that. And actually, there's something coming up later that we'll mention that also may be very uncomfortable. But... <laughs> I'm down there, June. Ugh. Yo, okay, if you're not uncomfortable by this. <laughs> But yeah, so why does April got a bunch of... think the scepter is an egg timer? Because it has an egg timer in the <laughs> center of it. <laughs> she's a, I like how she just like she got them all stuff, and then she's like, nah, I guess this weird thing is for Splinter. <laughs> it's got squiggles on it. I think that's Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, a completely American man doing the voice of Splinter doing a Japanese accent. Oh, well, yeah. t- Tony Shalhoub does the voice of Splinter on the current. Ninja Turtles incarnation, I believe. Yeah. I think the only time they ever had a Japanese guy do the voice of Splinter was in that TMNT CGI movie. Yeah. They had, uh, Which is m- technically the fourth one after this. Yes, and yeah. is, is quite enjoyable. I did enjoy it. Yeah, they got Mako or Mako or however you pronounce his name to be the voice of Splinter. But I haven't watched any newer Turtles since Turtles Forever. The one with the three different oh with the uh, crossovers yeah 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 I haven't seen anything since then the the Nickelodeon uh, series is actually pretty enjoyable very much uh, it's a nice mixture of the uh, the Fox Kids cartoon and the eighty seven series oh okay yeah so this stupid scepter <laughs> <laughs> this Somehow. ancient Japanese egg timer <laughs> yeah also is is uh, okay so we should say that back in Japan this guy Kenshin. Um, is the Emperor's son, and basically he is uh, joining the rebellion because he doesn't like his father wanting to go to war with them. So he's, he's fighting for the other side, uh, basically trying to reach some sort of agreement between the two parties. At the same time, the English are trying to sell the Emperor guns to use against the rebellion. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much... I got that pretty much, right? Yep. Damn, English. Yep. Okay. <laughs> the English, the, the British, whatever they are. Um, so... Kenshin, when he's he's brooding in his in his room, he's the Scott Evil of this movie. Um, he finds the 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 scepter, 
And, and the thing is, even before it starts getting like into crazy town, he's by himself in the room. He's reading the Japanese writing in English out loud. Yep. Yep. <laughs> After himself. throwing a temper tantrum. <laughs> yeah, he Japanese does throw a temper, temper tantrum. tantrum. He, he clears the room of these guys that are just chilling. <laughs> I mean, weren't like, they, they were priests, weren't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just like sitting there, and he's like, "I need to be with myself." <laughs> <laughs> my dad is such a jerk. Yeah, get out he, of my room. He's, he's like the emperor's emo kid son. <laughs> oh god. So this is where. So he grabs the scepter. He starts reading it. April says, "Like, hey, this egg timer thing is freaking out. By the way, just throw it, throw it somewhere. <laughs> Don't hang on to it." And they switch places, so Kenshin ends up in the sewer, and April goes to feudal Japan. Right. Okay, I didn't understand why they switched clothes. Shouldn't they have just come in the clothes that they were wearing? Well, to me... That was weird. That's the thing, like, it, it, they... Donatello later posits that it's a uh, it's an equal displacement of mass. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that may... That's fine, okay, so, like, if it's just organic mass, and they switch... <laughs> So he would pop into her clothes, and she would pop into his clothes. This is thrown out the window immediately because her stupid friggin' Walkman comes with her. Yeah. <laughs> Inorganic <Yes>. material. <laughs> right, right. It, like it, uh, it, guys. The time travel stuff in this movie is the some of it, it might be the stupidest time travel stuff in any movie. It, like I have, I have some of the logic. same problems with the. Uh, uh, with the the chaps that come at switch places with the turtles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they switch, and you know, April freaks out obviously because she's in feudal Japan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Kenshin passes out because he doesn't know what's going on, and then we get a fucking hilarious line because he says he calls them Kappa, and Michelangelo says Kappa. Cappuccino? It makes me hyper. Ha ha! There is so much yeah. ham-fisted comedy in this movie. That, that is the such line a where Michael Andrews like, "How did you get into April's pants?" Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even catch that one. Oh, Jesus. I caught that one. Oh, was, I caught that one when I first saw it. As it was a kid. when he was uh, he's passed out. Right after he passes right, he, out, he kind of comes to again, and Michael Angel's poking around at him. He's like, "How did you get into April's pants?" Yeah. Can you give me any tips? Yeah, well, you know what? Like, we got a fun yeah. little story about that uh, later uh, when we're uh, yeah. we're after we've done the wrap up. Oh, well, oh, okay. Yeah. What? <laughs> Trust me, it's it's intriguing, and you, you'll want to seek if, this out on YouTube once I tell you I was all gonna, about it. Oh, you know what? I I That's know actually what one of the about. clips I have because I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, good, good. Then let's. Yeah, we'll keep everybody we got, else in we'll, suspense then. <laughs> Ooh, we'll save that clip for later. It's so good. Stay tuned. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Donatello at this point <laughs> gives us, like, exposition slash historical background on the tradings be- between Japan and England. And that's why they'd be able to speak English, or he'd be able to speak right. English. Yeah. So shut up, Donatello. The turtles? <laughs> <laughs> Do the turtles seem that bothered that April is stuck in Japan? Because they're still cracking jokes. Yeah. They're still having a good time. Michelangelo, Michelangelo is dancing with boxer shorts on. <laughs> well, they've, 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 yes, they've formulated a plan. That they're going to uh, equally displace their mass and travel back to feudal Japan to rescue April. Michelangelo, being the thoughtful turtle that he is, decides he's going to wear a pair, a set of shorts, so that the chap who comes in his place isn't going to arrive. As he, he say. A, a butt hair naked? Is that what I he said? So. Something like that? Yeah. Bare butt naked. Bare yeah, butt naked. bare butt naked. And you can't uh, say bare ass naked. Right. So, Michelangelo's mm-hmm. wearing shorts. None of the other turtles take him up on his offer of, you know, uh, swim trunks it's to, to Splinter wear. Splinter says they don't have enough time. Yeah. Um, but whenever when the guys show up, they're all wearing their... Like, underpants? Undergarments. Or undergarments, or whatever, they, yeah. which basically look like the, the turtles' uh, chest plate and you know, cod piece. Except for the guy who switched places with Michelangelo, who is just wearing Michelangelo's shorts. Yep. Why would his chest place chest be underneath it? Right. Yep. Why would any of them have those chest plates though? Right. Exactly. <laughs> but it's it's a kids movie, so. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but they could have they could have been like creative about it. You know what I mean? They could have. 
They weren't. They could have. They could have done like an Austin Powers type deal. <laughs> they they could have done a lot of things better for this movie. Come on. Well, I mean, I guess. <laughs> but that takes we, time we and effort. Yeah. We also neglected to mention that Casey Jones is back from the first one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, played by Elias, however you pronounce his last is it name. Coteas. Sure. <laughs> He's on um, Chicago PD now, and uh, it was weird to see him with all that hair. And my wife didn't believe me that that was yeah, him. He's baller now. Yeah, he is bald. Complete bald. Yeah. Yep. His scene is banana. Like when he arrives, his scene is bananas because when he's re- he's talking to the turtles, he's on screen by himself. You could tell there's no one else in the room when he's acting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, he is literally playing to the camera and no one else. <laughs> But he he's upset because he wants to bust some skulls, and they're like, "No, Casey, we know we just brought a, a sort of a fan favorite from the first one back to the franchise, but you're gonna stay here and make hockey jokes." Don't worry, though, we've got a a, a, a British nowhere's near kick ass version of you to use in feudal Japan. <laughs> well, my question is: Is he British? Is he Australian? Is he American? Because he goes through is about he five yards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he he oh. Well, when he becomes this other character, we might as well say this right now. He barely, his lines are so short, and I think it's because he was not able to maintain the same accent. I guarantee you that. (laughs) Because as Casey Jones, fine. Elias Koteas, I'm I'm down with it. As as Japan Jones, (laughs) no. Absolutely not. No. Just no. No. He's terrible. (laughs) So, um... All right, so back to Japan. Let's go back to Japan and talk about April uh, at the, in the presence of Emperor Norinaga because they break her Walkman. Because it played uh, Gloria Stefan in Miami Sound Machine. Which, you know, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I sympathize. Um, and uh, she... Well, here, I'm going to actually do so. That we don't usually do this uh, too often, but I've got a, I've got a little clip here to play. Okay. So this is um, this is right after uh, this is shortly after they break her Walkman and uh, this guy Walker, who is the English man Texas who's Ranger? trying to sell him the guns. Yes, oh. <laughs> yes Walker, Texas Ranger, um, who's trying to sell them the guns. He comes in in the midst of it and uh, kind of talks it over with April and uh, Norinaga. So let's just play this clip here. It's about a minute long, and uh, we'll talk about it after. There's some there's some things to say. Daimyo and his court believe that you're a witch who has somehow managed to spirit away his son. Is this true? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I am a witch. See that? I shrunk four incredibly cool guys, and I locked him in there. Really? no power. Let me question her about your son, then you can roast her, toast her, chop her into tiny little pieces and feed her to the birds. No. I want her to suffer. So there you go. <laughs> All right, She's gonna um, turn him into puke! <laughs> <laughs> first thing I want to say is... Uh, first thing I want to say is, like, Walker being, like, <laughs> that weird reaction thing where she says, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna turn you into a puddle of puke or whatever and he just like has this weird thing uh, done <laughs> like what was that Tourette's I, I tried turning the subtitles out of rewinding that and I still am not confident of what he said <laughs> and then he says we're gonna you, you can roast her toast, toast her, her yeah. cut her into a million pieces feed her to the birds feed her to the birds and he says no I want her to suffer <laughs> what the fuck is that then yeah uh, apparently that's nothing in uh, ancient Japan. Yeah, roasting someone alive is apparently not enough suffering. Well, no, because then you got to toast them after you roast them. So <laughs> that's right. It's, it's, I think it's just too much work for them. See, I did say I, you'd want to toast them before you roast them. Because <laughs> you, you <laughs> think so. <laughs> yes. My favorite you part of that whole correct. scene, though, is still ruffles. <laughs> <laughs> ruffles. 
waffles. He is dressed like a musketeer. Yeah. Oh, I will also say, though, as weird as that, like, done thing was, I genuinely think Stuart Wilson is pretty good in this movie. <laughs> the I'm, I'm trying my hardest to save this thing yeah. award goes he is. to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, he, he's, he's there to play. <laughs> he knows exactly what this thing is. Um, all right, well, turtles, let's get these turtles over to Japan, guys. Into Shogun? into shogun because they actually it's time say to riff that. some more <laughs> yes He'd, oh yeah it's time to riff um yeah man so <laughs> april also gets thrown into a prison at this point uh-huh um gets thrown into a cage uh th- this guy niles uh who we'll talk about later of course with the little wet willy thing um I know I get it that there is such a thing as a Tweety Bird, but it sounded like he was making an actual Tweety Bird reference. <laughs> okay. In 1600s Japan, like the character Tweety Bird. Oh, okay. What reference is that? I missed it. Well, he just, well, I mean, he simply says, like, he throws her into the cage and he's like, my little Tweety Bird. And it just, I don't know, to me, it just sounded like, you know what? Warner Brothers existed in feudal Japan. Oh. Again, I don't think I'm they're that clever. Him. I don't, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he, he could have. I mean, he could have said, is. you know, if, he, if you had said that he was like, oh, I, I, you know, I, I, I thought I thought a prisoner or something. I don't know. <laughs> then I, I give you some credit just to them making a reference to it. But uh, I think you're reaching here. Well, it could even you just know. be because the guy has an obsession with birds, like his mm. boss. Could yeah. just be. Yeah, that's a thing that kind of gets touched on, but not really. Not like, until the end. It doesn't really. Yeah, it doesn't really amount to much except, you know, it kind of... Anyway, we'll get to that, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so, guys, help me out with something here. Okay. Because she's in the she's in the, the, the cell or whatever, the little cage. Mm-hmm. She sees uh, Japan Jones, mm-hmm. and she says, Casey? And then it's never brought up again. Well, so yeah. is he actually supposed to be a descendant of Casey Jones? I I don't know. Yeah. Okay. That's a big question. Because yeah, he me. he looks at her when she yeah. says it, and then just starts looking around. There's yeah. Nothing. Yeah. And we and don't get anything yeah. in the future where Casey's like, oh, you know, my ancient ancestors uh, traveled to Japan there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he was kind of a prick, and he didn't know who he was. <laughs> um. Yeah, and then she looks at a rat and she's like, huh, I know where you came from. Oh, you know, Cut you look to familiar Splinter. too. Yeah, you look yeah. familiar yeah. too. Uh, <laughs> there's, a line, <laughs> there's a line before they go to Japan where Splinter says, we have no time for this scientific debate. <laughs> like, wouldn't that be important? <laughs> to kind of establish... I think that was, wasn't that the leave. point where... Not to a rat. With the, with, the, with the shorts? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> yeah. No... Shorts yeah. barely are a scientific debate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so Quip City population this movie now. <laughs> oh my god. Japan. Yes. Uh, I think They're I swallowed a frog. Hope it wasn't an ancestor. Whoa, whoa. Oh my yeah. god, we're in Shogun. Oh, I must just... admit, the graphics for them going with the lightning and all that, that was probably the best of the movie. Yeah, the uh, the, the, the Terminator time travel stuff was, was pretty good. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> well, and guys, my other thing here is uh, Michelangelo, he's the only one that ends up going, like, backwards on his horse, like, when he lands in Japan. Right. Yeah. And he is Which just causes the riffing. The, uh, the guy who was transported in his place was riding his horse backwards. Yeah. it ha- He had to have been. Yeah. <laughs> and he is just riffing to no one in particular. Like no one is uh, is his audience. I feel this like is, yeah. I think Michelangelo missed his concerted dosage that morning. <laughs> this this is the this is the only other clip I want to play because it's it's a short one. But it's just keep in mind no one is listening to him right now. Yeah. This is just Michelangelo. Okay. <laughs> Like, no one's listening to what him. What did he see it on? Bantha? Maybe he just likes talking to himself. 
Which doesn't it, surprise me, knowing like that character. Well, you know, when we when he was trying on the shorts, we did uh, happen upon him uh, dancing and, and singing Hawaiian. Pretty much. When no one else was watching. By himself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By himself. It's just such a... Anytime in a movie someone is just making jokes with no one around, it just seems... It's so stupid because you're clearly doing it for the movie. It, it, like the, the movie audience, which... Again, makes no sense in terms of the actual movie, uh, in terms of the actual story. You know Come what on, I mean? They don't know they're in a movie. <laughs> <sighs> no. <laughs> also, the uh, the shot of uh, uh, the the ancient Japanese kingdom. How many times did they use that shot in this movie? I think five. You mean that's st- that still picture? Yes. I think it was five. <laughs> oh my god! I have a note here. We paid for this. We're gonna use it. It's your hero. We got, we got a action. picture. We got to pad this film out. Get a picture and show it a bunch of times. <laughs> Damn it! How do they keep getting in here? <laughs> so yeah, the turtles get separated. Michelangelo uh, gets knocked out by one of the rebels. Mm-hmm. Who we find out later is Mitsu, which is the name um, of a, uh, a, uh, a Quebecois singer in Canada. Yeah, it's played by the same person. <laughs> wouldn't that be great? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I wouldn't put it past this movie. Hey, yeah. you, you know, Mitsu was kind of foxy there. I'm just going to put that out there. Oh, no, but I'm saying, like, getting someone Quebec who's singer. not Japanese to play a Japanese person. <laughs> <laughs> hey, work for Ghost on the Shell. Wait, now, you said there was a thing about how he said, um, how one of the turtles said, uh, I hope I did, I think I swallowed a toad. I hope it wasn't an ancestor, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Is not one an amphibian and one a reptile? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> it's a kids oh, movie. Oh, so many pop culture. It's a kids movie. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's still dumb. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying it's not. <laughs> so many stupid pop culture jokes in this movie, and it's it's so funny because they are incredibly dated now. <laughs> okay, and one thing that really bothers me about this when they start making these jokes in Japan. The Japanese people just smile like they know what the hell they're talking about. Mm. When they would have yeah. no clue of any of the references. Uh, Howard Stern, good joke, reptile son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lifestyles are the rich and dangerous. Oh, God. I think that was the most dated one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Mike, yeah, Mikey gets knocked out by like the the rebels because they don't. They're, they're like it's a giant. Uh, well, at first they think it's just one of the samurai. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, oh, okay, don't worry, guys. It's just a giant mutated turtle. Um, and the rest of the turtles are trying to bust April out of prison. <clears throat> Another great line here I wrote down. Uh, the emperor says something along the lines of, secrets leak like a stink from a dead pig. <laughs> <laughs> and then Walker old says... Japanese proverb. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> and then Walker follows up with, you have a way with words, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. So let's talk about the prison scene. <laughs> oh, not Oz? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 not Oz. <laughs> I was about to sing the wrong song. I was about to say, got myself again. And that's just some... <laughs> Good lord. Yeah. Uh, not the same thing. You really need to brush up on your gritty HBO dramas. I know. I've watched all of Oz, uh, funny enough. I'm not done The Sopranos, though. Yeah. So yeah, the prison scene. Um, I love how the turtles, they're Japanese. It's just car brand names. Yeah. Oh my god, the amount of <laughs> un- inappropriate Asian jokes in this movie. Wow, you guys do have a good educational system, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh... Kawasaki to- Toyota. How about Sayonara? Adios, ciao. So bad. Uh, you remember when the. <laughs> <laughs> Mark used to make those jokes yeah. when he was uh oh what the hell Sunny No, not when he was Sunny Warclaw when he was Oh, Suzuki Tanaki. Suzuki Tanaki. Yeah. Just to going to clarify here before anybody's like <laughs> what the yeah. hell are you talking about? Everybody right now just went what? <laughs> Way back in our professional wrestling days when uh we had this chap uh Suzuki he played a character named Susaki Tanaki. He's a white guy who lived in Barnesville, but he played a character named Susaki Tanaki. And when he came out to speak Japanese, all he said were things like, Oh, Mitsubishi Nintendo Honda. Yep. 
punishment. So we're all you guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. <laughs> you know what, though? What? Still more sensitive than this movie. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, it's a uh, tough call. I, it's a really tough call. It's a tough call. Oh, yes. I just have a lot of lot of things here where it just says there's a lot of quipping. There's so much quipping. Why is there so much quipping? Because <laughs> they, they, they bust in the prison. Uh, they give Niles a wet willy. Fantastic. Yep. Um, he says, wet what em? <laughs> I think. And yeah. watch, watch and the hands on the left side of the screen that like, don't even go near his ear the first time. Oh, I didn't oh, notice it, that. It like, misses the ear and then he goes back into it. <laughs> Okay, give me 20 minutes. I'm going to watch that right now. <laughs> um, yeah. And the the big guy guarding them, they make like five fat jokes in a row. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he locks himself in his cage. Like, you can tell it's just so last minute because it's all, they're, they're off screen for every one of these lines. The I'll be back and, one is the most egregious ADR. Oh, uh, my God. Raphael. Exchange, anyways. He does not move his mouth. Mm-hmm. It's like it's almost like they went to an Arnold Schwarzenegger soundboard before they existed, <laughs> and just inserted the clip. The uh, thing that bothered me the most about the guard, though, is he started lifting himself in the cage. Yeah, mm-hmm. like why? Well, he's terrified of these kappa. Yeah, like, but how is that going to save him? Though, yeah, he's going to be higher to their like eye level if he lifts himself. Well, he's in a cage. <laughs> he's trying to get away. I guess we just wanted to show most his of... mad upper body skills. I yeah, don't know. maybe. Most of the Japanese... Here's another thing. In these Turtles movies, do you ever once feel like the Turtles are in any sort of peril from these villains? No. Not really, no. They're kicking their asses all over the place. Yeah. Um, at least in the in the first two, it looked like they, you know, the villains stood a chance at times. Well, Raphael gets beaten into a coma in the first one. Oh, see, I definitely don't remember that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like that's the impetus of them to leave the city. When they're staying at April's first, after Splinter gets kidnapped in the first movie, yep. they go to live with April uh, so they can regroup and figure out what they're going to do. Raphael gets into a fight with Leonardo, goes up onto the rooftop, and then gets into this a big fight with all these foot soldiers who just beat the hell out of him and then throw him through a skylight. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I don't think I've even seen the first movie. Oh, oh my, do yourself a favor. Yeah, watch that. But, well, I have it now. Like I, I've got it. I've got it now. But I like because I wanted to look at it, and nothing looks familiar. So maybe I haven't seen it. Uh, do your own favor. It's fantastic. But as for going um, back to the peril thing, about yeah, forty guards came in to the dungeon, and mm-hmm. nothing. You are expecting maybe the Adams family? <laughs> yeah, oh. and then they just oh, no, destroy that's... them all. Yeah, yeah. See you next fall. Whoa, watch your head. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So many one-liners. It's just the, in that the, one fight. But in, 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 in all fairness, though, in the first movie, there there are there are a fair bit of one-liners during the fights and stuff like that, but it's not to the degree that it is in this no. movie. No, not at all. Oh, no. Like you said, the guy who did the punch-ups did most of the script. Yeah, he had, had to. Like, yeah. that, that is most of the movie. <laughs> so, um... Okay, Nathan or Welcome Mal- to Turtle, Malcolm. I can't get up. <laughs> maybe, maybe one of you guys want to talk about the the really disturbing moment here coming up. So the turtles in April, they make it out. They're they're ba- they're out in the in the uh, They've escaped. Yep, they're in the the, yeah. the wilds of Japan. Oh, is this? Yeah, April's cutting the is length of her way? skirt. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and go right ahead. She shortens her skirt, and they, she's like, "What? Uh, I'm on vacation." They're like, "It's okay, showing." Yeah. So they're talking about their turtle boners. Yes, they, April gave them a to turtle April. boner. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A human. I'm pretty. Which, I'm pretty not... sure there are some comics online that regard this. There's, it's not the first time uh, the idea of an interspecies relationship has been broached by the Ninja Turtles no. in April. It's usually uh, lanky, though, isn't it? Usually, it's yes. Ninety percent yeah. lanky. Yeah. P.S. More to come on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, but that, that was the first, that was one of the most disturbing parts, I thought. We also find out that Raphael is a big nature buff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, loves He's it. like, oh no my god, hands. I love this fresh air and Look the... at the water, you, can, you don't see anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He wants to migrate because he has a beak. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> He's not a smart man, or no. a smart turtle, I guess. None of them are. Well, come on, they're no. only teenagers, what do you expect? This is true, you know. 
Um, so the rebels now attack because they think the turtles are uh, part of the um, imperial imperial army, I guess. Well, they are the wearing guards, the yeah, yeah, they're wearing the Japanese the guard outfits. Which I'm sorry, I know they have helmets on, but you could tell there's no human faces underneath that. <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> they should be like looking at that and be like, "Hold the phone, guys! <laughs> what is that?" <laughs> okay. So they they come and attack, and I don't understand this. April okay. stuck to a tree with one arrow. Yes, and that's it. She yes. just stands there and does nothing. Nope. No, until Japan Jones saves her. Exactly. <laughs> Like she, I think she yeah. looks at the arrow and then looks back up at the camera. I mean, she doesn't want to rip her costume that's not hers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, she's already cut enough of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it's so so poor Kenshin's going to go back with, like, booty shorts when he gets back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but we'll gonna, talk about that at the end. He's going to kick off the fashion craze that defined feudal Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Also, are we not even concerned about messing with the space-time continuum in not this Not at all. Nope. Not in this. Nope. And because in fact, people... just because the idea... Like, we've kind of glazed over this. Uh, there was a, a prophecy. That's why they think these turtles are, oh. are Kappa. Oh, the demons, But the yeah. demons, they, all, they look like turtles. They look okay. like the Ninja Turtles. So this pauses the idea. Had this movie not been such a dumpster fire... Uh, uh, with re- with his reception, we could have possibly gotten a sequel where they went even further back in time. Yeah, that okay. That part I do not understand because see, Norinaga says my ancestors were killed by these demons, and not yeah. only do they look like the turtles, they have the same goddamn bandanas, same bandana, same elbow pads, knee pads, everything. Well, no, they didn't have bandanas. No, they had the they oh, had they the did. elbow pads and knee pads for sure. Yeah, I, know, but, I saw but in, in the parchment, none of them have the uh, the headbands off. Oh, okay, it's just the the turtle face. Yeah, I remember the headbands, but even then, <laughs> even <laughs> without like, that, they still look yeah. exactly like the turtles. They are the friggin' turtles, and it's like, what? <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Yeah, what could, is this movie trying to posit? <laughs> they could have easily made a fourth one and could have actually named it Turtles in Time or Turtles in Time. Where they two. just wipe out Norinaga's ancestor? Just <laughs> yeah, kill exactly. Them all? Well, see, that's the thing. They were, he said they were defeated, not killed, defeated. So, I mean, you yeah. can be defeated without being killed. Yeah. Uh, just, it's, it's not as it, fun, that, though. That that part is really strange, and and also later when they see the scrolls, like when the turtles see them, they're just like, "Hey, look, guys, it's us. Cool. Okay, back to the movie." Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's it. We're done touching on that. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> yeah. nothing. Uh, so, okay, the rebels uh, realize they're just giant mutant turtles. So I mean, we're fine now. They're not oh, yeah. the Imperial oh, wait, what's Army. What's that line? What's it? Oh, when he throws the. Uh... And stops no, 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 lady. That's not yes, nice. That. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He just and she understands. She just sits there, and goes, oh. And then well, yeah, stops. because and, and even at, <laughs> at first she's speaking Japanese to her uh, cohorts. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, she's gonna. Nope. Perfectly plain English. Perfectly plain English. <laughs> yeah, for being 1600 in Japan, their English is better than most oh. of the people I know around here. <laughs> well, you know, it's because they were trading with the English at the time yes. that they were at uh, that. <laughs> That's how they got the perfect English. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it and, only takes a couple days, guys, and then you can nail it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mikey posits the idea that um, uh, what the hell is this? Uh, the Musketeer guy looks like Clint Eastwood. Yeah, he yeah, does not uh, look like Clint Eastwood at not all, in the least. No. And actually, there's like two or three different references to that about him. Yeah, from different turtles. Yep, because Raphael yeah. says one as well. So this is where, the, yeah, so this scene you were talking about, so Mikey is in the village, because they've kind of, the, the rebels had knocked him out, and they took him to the village, and he, he recovers just as Walker's coming in, invading uh, with his men to, like, you know, capture, kill, whatever. And burn um, and destroy. And, well, no, yeah, they didn't want to kill anyone. He just said, fire above their heads. So yeah, it's basically like a Vietnam era, <laughs> like, <laughs> war crime. Until they decide to start lighting the place on fire. Yeah. So then, okay, so the thing here is that um, the other turtles realize that Mikey's down there, so they come in for the save, but their method of saving him is very <laughs> haphazard. <laughs> yeah. So they come up behind Niles, uh, the, the wet willy fella, yep. and they give him a wet willy, and he just so happens to raise his gun and shoot it and knock Walker's hat off, thankfully ending uh, Walker's 
uh, holding the gun on Mikey. Like, it was a very, a very, like, coincidental string of events. Yes. <laughs> and then, and then Mikey's like, great timing, dudes! Yeah, uh, doesn't, it, doesn't Michelangelo save a kid from a, uh, fire here? And I think they make he does, and then Leonardo brings some reference. Back. Yeah. Well, he makes he, he makes a backdraft joke, which he says, "Kurt Russell, eat your heart out." Yep. And then Leo Leo with April standing right there does CPR on a human child <laughs> with the mouth not even touching. Would it not make more sense for April to yep. be the one performing CPR on this child? It, but here's I do have to take. Go ahead. Sir. I was just going to say, I do have to take Mitsu to task here, though, because she's been on board with the turtles the whole time, and when they when he's about to perform CPR, she's like, no, he's going to cast an evil spell! Yep. Yeah. But here, here's the thing. Mikey goes into the house to save the kid. Leo gives him CPR, but yet somehow he's drawn to Raphael. Yep. The only <laughs> yeah. one that has nothing to do with him is well, Donatello. Yeah. <laughs> That's because Corey Feldman was like, pass. <laughs> Uh, imagine if Corey Feldman was actually in the suit. He's like six <laughs> inches shorter than all the other turtles. <laughs> oh, that would have been fantastic. No, they probably would have put Corey Haim in the suit so that no one had to see him. <laughs> <laughs> Is there now? Did they make a Lone Ranger joke? Did they? I think, I think so. they did. Yeah, they play the music During when the horsey... they're all riding horses. Yeah, so they're doing their horsey training. And then Donatello is like, you know, sometimes I hate that guy. Yep. Yeah. Because <laughs> Leo's like, I got it. And he's like riding around doing trick riding Standing and stuff like that. Yeah. That would have been like, really it, hard. Yeah. In that suit in that to turtle stand getup? on a horse. Absolutely. <laughs> there had to be wires. Had to be. <laughs> it really speaks to this movie, though, because Donatello, like, the line is, sometimes I hate that guy. And you'd think that'd be enough, but then he has to go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, this isn't driving like, home. That's that's the joke, guys. Now's the laughter part. Yeah. Hey, guess what we get to do now? Go back to modern day New York. Oh, fun. I mean, what? Yeah. <laughs> when Casey Jones tells them to try a little herbal. Because I wasn't thinking tea in that scene. Tea. I was not thinking tea when Casey Jones says that. I actually, the what I really took away from this scene was that hockey brings people together. <laughs> That's and then fair. Beat the hell out of each other well, in a fun cool. hockey kind of way. Yeah. yeah. What I took away from this scene was that there you can get really good TV reception in the sewer. <laughs> well, as long as you have one of those really old small ones, you're yeah, fine. Yeah. 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 We're not okay, even in the playoffs. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so basically what down. we're what we're saying here is that Casey Jones gets all these uh these samurai that are in the turtles have taken the turtles place in uh, New York to watch hockey. Mm-hmm. And they are enthralled. Yeah, the samurais are ready to like make some ruckus and start beating up Casey Jones You're like, "Oh, what's this?" Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. all all five yeah. of them just staring at it trying to touch it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that sounded really um, bad out loud. Well, <laughs> well, you know. Um, it's not the worst this thing is where the... on this podcast. <laughs> it's all far <laughs> from it. The um, now this is where the the costumes really start to be. I think this is where they're really the most noticeable. Possibly is when Ra- Raphael has this scene with Yoshi when he's oh, like again He Man object lesson <laughs> moment. I was almost yeah. expecting Orko to deliver this. You really got to get a handle on your temper. You see? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Raphael's basically trying to get Yoshi to control his temper. And the whole time he's doing this weird smiling and it's just so unsettling. Yes. <laughs> oh, my favorite part is, did I just say that? Yeah. Uh, it is quite uh, it was quite out of character for Raphael oh to tell God. someone, yeah. you need to calm down and watch your temper. I, th- I get the movie was going for that. Like, oh, isn't it ironic that Raphael is telling someone to control his temper? And it's like, no, shut up, movie. <laughs> <laughs> we we should also talk about there's also a constant struggle in this movie with Walker trying to uh, sell the weapons to uh, the Emperor because he's hesitant about it mm-hmm. at first. Yeah. But then when Walker eventually sees the turtles, which we talked about earlier in the Clint Eastwood uh, bit... Um, uh, he's more willing to do it because they are like, you know, he says, oh, they killed my ancestors or they defeated my ancestors. Um, guns for gold. 
and he eventually uh, signs off on it, and they're going to sell them some guns, because that's an exciting subplot in this Turtles movie. (laughs) Which, I don't know, man. Like, it's 1603. I'm Mm -hmm. pretty sure that that, uh, Black Powder has been weaponized long before this. And I, I'm pretty sure it was the uh, Eastern cultures that that did it. Apparently, if you are not this area positing, Japan. if you are positing to me that the writers of Teenage Mutant <laughs> Ninja Turtles three did not do their research, then I I challenge that. I challenge it. <laughs> uh, uh, you know Son what? of the, a snapper! The, you know what? Walker so, apparently did. Uh, 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 did develop or was ahead of his time on. He has an adult coloring book. <laughs> Did you see that where he was painting the pictures of the bird? It was just like just right in the line. It was a, yeah, it was Real? like it was a flower because then it, oh yeah, it was a flower. Then he picked yeah. up the flower, and started ripping the petals off and threw it. Yeah, he's like painting. It's it weird that he was mistakenly. Isn't it weird that he was coloring a flower and not a bird? Yeah. It, yes, considering his obsession his... with birds. Yeah, which, which again, it's once. weird. Like it's it's touched upon, but then it's like forgotten. Like and then for it a nearly kills him. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, kind of does. <laughs> Guys, I don't want to like, I don't want to uh, jump to conclusions, but I think this screenplay was poorly written. <laughs> you don't say. I'm, I'm, was I'm, it I'm this, not sold on that, or yet. was it the zany hockey fight between the? Uh, oh my god! The, the Shogun, which are in modern day New York, because when Casey tries to say, "Hey, let's try some hockey," and they just start beating the crap out of each other. If, if you watch the guy in the back, he almost picks him up like a body slam and then puts him down. <laughs> Although I think Kenshin is like the only smart one. Yeah. Like think, he's the one that doesn't do I, any of that. Like that's what they're driving at because like they're supposed to be like meathead yeah. soldiers and he's supposed to be the enlightened prince or was it heir apparent I guess would be because uh, emperors don't have princes. Yeah, because um, he just yeah. shows a splinter yeah. and calls him sensei. Yeah. <laughs> he calls him sensei for some reason. Yeah, and does Splinter have time traveling Spidey sense? Oh my God, that's I have yeah. exactly that note. Splinter can hear across time. <laughs> Cause like well, I forget what happens, but he says something bad. Like well, and I then, forget uh, what it was. Then he goes think... along with it. It's like I sense it too. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's almost like he's lying though. It's like one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, yeah, totally, yep. Yeah, I, I feel got, it. Yeah, that yeah, too. I feel it. I think he was, I, feel, I, I, I feel, think Kenshin <laughs> just wanted to belong. I, I totally totally got the force too, yeah. uh, Yoda. Uh, <laughs> because back in the town, back in the in the rebel home base, Raphael's they find flying out kites. That, uh, <laughs> Give, it was flying a touching kites. yo-yo moment. <laughs> Raphael makes Yoshi a yo-yo. Yep. Um, we also find out that uh, Don- Donatello basically constructs a new uh, scepter, <laughs> yes. or he gets uh, someone else to do it. Sorry, uh, but he comes I, up I with do, the plan. Yeah, I will like, say I, I got together. one one genuine laugh in this in this scene here um, is when he says uh, April says like Are you you really gonna construct a new scepter? And he's like No, of course not. That guy is. He's good with his hands. He's just banging metal. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got a, a little a little giggle off that one. And then Mikey makes pizza and uses it as a frisbee. <laughs> and hits uh, Donatello and the Japanese fella. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I have a note there. That I actually call it yuck, yuck pizza. <laughs> because it was a real Three Stooges type moment. <laughs> oh, when he bites it and goes, yeah. And tosses it. Dun, dun. <laughs> and guys, that is like... <laughs> less stereotypical than what he actually says in the movie yeah it is <laughs> that's the sad part <laughs> oh yeah so well here here's so um the guy that uh japan jones inexplicably turns on everyone at this point yeah. well not inexplicably i mean it is it it is a like a turncoat moment but we find out uh, a little bit later, and not to run ahead, but I mean, we kind of have to. That uh, Walker has paid him to, to lie, to yeah. cheat, and steal. <laughs> but, <laughs> the only, the oh, only, the only note I have right now for that <laughs> is Japanese Casey Joan is an asshole. <laughs> it, it, well, I, my, I don't really understand his character in general. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it flip flops. Yeah, like he he does that, and then of course later we'll get the thing where he turns again. But it's like I don't understand what his motivation was in the first place because he he turns on them. He kidnaps Mitsu, um, and wants the scepter back because Yoshi, spoiler alert, was hiding the scepter the whole time. Mm-hmm. Little brat. 
Um, Which it's because... funny because when he gives when they give Raph the the scepter, they're like, "Oh, check it out!" and they're just passing it around. They just broke the other one, <laughs> the new one that they constructed, <laughs> just broke it a few moments ago, and now they're just tossing this thing around like it's not gonna break. Yeah, yeah, it's uh... more sturdy. Because it's ancient, mm. sturdier. Also, when they sturdier also when they break sturdier. the first one, nah. when they, when they break the first one, it sounds like they drop it down a well that's like indoors. Yeah, and it yeah. just drops for like fifteen feet. <laughs> that's a really unsafe thing to I have. Think it was the house. bathroom. <laughs> that's why they weren't going to get it. <laughs> they live in a sewer. No one's gonna reach down. Come on, turtles. <laughs> Well, come on. When they when they broke out of the, but they live in the sewer. They don't live in sewage. Yeah, because when they broke out of the jail, well, sure they fell into the it. sewage. And actually, in this one, they don't even live in the sewer because they they live in an old abandoned uh, oh uh, train. subway tunnel or yeah. station. Yeah. But um, but yeah. So Japan Jones takes Mitsu. He takes the scepter. Goes back to Walker. Um. Then uh, okay. Weird. Weirdly. April just shows up to confront them and tells Walker not to trust Japan Jones. I'm like, what? And that's like, where he says, think... I know I've paid him to lie, to cheat and steal. But wasn't that weird? Like, why would April willingly go there by herself? Well, it was a distraction so the turtles could climb up the wall. Right, and they could have their sewer trap. <laughs> See, I didn't like think they really spelled that out very well. <laughs> He can and I was scum like, a bad name. I was like, oh, good. That's a good line. Good line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny, we mention all these uh, these modern jokes that the turtles keep making. Uh, they make this joke about the emperor. Someone calls him a Wayne Newton looking dude, and I was like, he does look like Wayne Newton. <laughs> also, even a, a Wayne Newton joke, even in 1993, horribly outdated. I don't know. He was in Fort Fairley, and that came out in like 1990. Yeah, he, he was still semi relevant, but not really. He was on that line. Yeah, Wayne Newton, Las Vegas comedian. <laughs> I'm gonna argue that was that was outdated in 1993. You can argue it. I'm not gonna accept your argument, but you can argue it. Yeah. Well, that's fine because I have a note that says "self wet Willie." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. So, <laughs> um, the turtles now are going after, like, like we said, they're going after to try to uh, get Mitsu back and the scepter because obviously they want to go back to their time period. Yeah, a pretty big fight scene, and this is like actually one of the, I, I, in my opinion, anyways, one of the better parts of the movie. The fight choreography, choreography that happens in this, the preceding scenes, is actually quite good considering the amount of movement these guys have to put on wearing those big bulky turtle suits. They even get like that high foot in there yeah. which looked really sharp. And even in the previous fights, they were also slow. Yeah. All the fights. Like it was bold. They were bulky moving yeah. and stuff like that. This one is very very fluid. Are we talking about the one in the uh like the climactic fight here? Yes. Okay, yeah. Um and cuz Leonardo then has his duel with uh Norinaga. Oh my god, I have got a fantastic story about this. <laughs> Okay. Okay. No, go on. So, oh, I'm intrigued now. He's only during this sword duel with Norinaga. He's uh, Norinaga's got one sword. Leo's got one sword. They're you know battling. And I told you I saw this at a matinee when I originally saw it in theaters. So you've got to understand that a good portion of the crowd are all little kids. Right, because it's like three in the afternoon. Parents are, are taking their kids that because their kids not going to be able to stay up past eight o'clock to see a Ninja Turtles movie. Yeah. While this is happening, there is this little kid behind me losing his mind, <laughs> yelling at the screen for Leonardo to use his other sword. <laughs> <laughs> use your other sword, Leo! Come on, it's right there. Oh my. God. <laughs> well, he does eventually. Eventually, yeah. <laughs> but this kid was like, he just yelling <laughs> at the screen. I'm like, I didn't think this really happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like well, he, um, he. It looks like he's gonna cut his head off. Yes, <laughs> he merely cuts his little uh, ponytail. It cuts a piece of his hair. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or the the, the snitch. 
Chris Jericho <laughs> thing, is. yeah. What did you call wow, the wrestling? Ref- yeah, Sneech. I already made the wrestling reference. We got that one in earlier when I said. Oh, she I was know. I'm turn just... him into puke. No, I'm saying they're coming in Fast and Furious. That's what oh, I'm saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I just have a note here that says the turtles are kind of doing stereotypical Japanese yelling types screaming. <laughs> I also swear to I swear I heard like a Japanese version of like the Wilhelm scream at one point. That's a possibility. Oh yeah. It was like Yeah yo what Okay. Yeah. That was it. That just happened. It didn't sound Japanese at all. No, no, it didn't. (laughs) Okay, you know what? I'm not gonna do the real one because it's more offensive. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Um Yeah, so the big battle scene. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, so, sorry, I got distracted for a second. Uh, <clears throat> the big battle scene, yes. Uh-huh. So the Norinaga fight, and then Leonardo drops a bell on him, which somehow doesn't kill him. Right. <laughs> and then or they make, like, him deaf or yeah, anything. He, he was just tiny enough so that he could fit in the hole yep. of the bell. And the, How did... Yeah. Yeah. He, he perfectly... Like, if anything, Donatello should be doing that scene because he know he knows more about like mathematics and science. Yeah, the <laughs> equations they get it right so it doesn't kill him. But no, yeah. Donatello just whacks it with his cane. And and again, <laughs> we we really need to pause the idea uh, that they did not give a shit no. about the <laughs> space time continuum no. at all. No, <laughs> no, because, because they people are getting killed try to people. left, yeah. right, and center in this fight. Technically, they're not being. Oh, yeah, they're... No, there's a couple people that get killed. A couple that die, but not a lot. A lot of them just get knocked the hell out. Right. Yeah. Um. Uh, they 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 do call him Don King. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's after which the, again. The cannon. Yeah, that's later. But I mean, th- that is another example of a joke that was clearly added after. Yeah. No. No. Walker was was going to shoot them with a, uh, uh, with a cannon. And yeah. Then... Well, let's talk about let's talk about this scene here. Okay. <laughs> this this cannon scene. Go ahead. Well, Walker was going to shoot them with the with the cannon uh, be, to prove that uh, they weren't demons; that well, the the bullets would not yeah, bounce that, off. That's them. because that's because yeah, he told them you can kill us with your regular weapons. He goes, okay, right. here I'll pull this freaking giant cannon and shoot you with it. And he shoots the cannon, and uh, Leo ducks down <laughs> in his shell. It blows the the top off of the the bell prison. I love being a turtle. I love being a turtle, and hey, look, it's Don King. Yeah. Because Niranagi comes up and he's got, you know, big frizzy Don King hair. How do you feel about this ducking in the shell thing? Dude, they they use it in every movie. At least once. Yeah. I don't remember it in the second one at all. Really? No, they, they use it in the second one for sure. And they definitely use it in the first one. Yeah. Because that's one of the ways they do that. And usually they'll work in the line, I love being a turtle. Maybe it's just the, the fact that these costumes are so horrible that it just looks like garbage. <laughs> Well, it's a very good possibility. Here's that. <laughs> um, We're not. So yeah, oh, he, well, the best part. This is the line coming up where <laughs> Leo says to, I think he says to Walker, "We're not demons. We're turtles, friend." <laughs> <laughs> the hell is that? Uh, Cappuccino? What? <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Again, so many great lines. But now we go um, to the undoing of Walker. You mean? <laughs> great lines come on <laughs> back to uh back to new york though um for a second because casey jones at this point is like all right they're gonna probably come back soon yeah. they're go- so we Let's need to start gathering up yeah I we gotta leave the bar that this the this scene especially was just kind of shoehorned in so they could fit in more music to put on the soundtrack yeah. Oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey. Yes, that was featured heavily in the promotion of this movie. It was released as a single from the soundtrack for this movie. They're calling Uh-oh. me about it right now to tell me all about it. Yes, I'm talking about Tarzan Boy. Oh. Leave me alone. You somehow answered it before it stopped ringing. No, I had impressive. call display and I was yelling at the call. To, I was yelling at the phone. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I knew it was them calling me to say, make sure you mention our song because it hasn't been popular in 30 years. Well, it's not going to be popular for the next 30 years there either. There you go. So, but yeah, they, they're in the bar and this song is playing on the jukebox. Yeah. And then, and then Casey Joe here, this is the only acknowledgement of the space time continuum. Because Casey Jones, they're playing on the arcade and stuff, and they're dancing. And Casey Jones says, 
man, this might really mess up the past. <laughs> the one time they the mention o- it through the entire movie. <laughs> the only person in the entire movie who is concerned with the t- fabric of time and space is a vigilante who wears a hockey mask and beats up people with a goalie stick. Yep. All right. Casey... It makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> Casey fucking Jones is the voice of scientific reason. That should be in every turtle movie ever. Casey Jones. I want that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Casey fucking Jones is the voice of reason and science. I will say that uh, if we ever geez. start t- selling t-shirts, that's going to be the first one. I'll take two. <laughs> I know you will. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh. Yeah, so he mentions that, and again, it's the only time it's ever mentioned. So, uh, back in Japan, we get the final uh, thing with Walker, Mm -hmm. and like we said... Who is uh, now absolutely... can't go anywhere without his birds. Forgets them twice. Yes. And goes back for them at the risk of peril. Twice. Yes. Yeah, um, and that proves to be his undoing. Thankfully, (laughs) so, okay, here's the the thing. So, he has a scepter. (laughs) He has his scepter. He throws it in the air. There is a shitload of stuff that happens while it's in the air. Yeah, he must have used all of his might to throw it up that high. <laughs> He's a Terminator. <laughs> he has <Yeah>. to be. <laughs> because it's in the air, and like he has like three lines. They go, whoa, for a while. Uh, Japan Jones runs over to his spot, and the scepter <laughs> is still in the air. Yep. yep. <laughs> so Mikey catches it. Um, before it, before it lands and smashes, almost falls Walker, off the roof. Walker grabs his bird. Wait, oh, that's <laughs> no. He sound doesn't right. grab the bird. No, he tries to. He tries to grab his bird. Yeah, <laughs> he tries to grab his bird, and then Japan Jones decides to turn on him with a cannon that just happens to be loaded and pointed in the correct yeah. direction. Yeah, at the pole. <laughs> At the pole, <laughs> and Walker See, is thrown into the water. Amazing death scene, by the way. Yes. Oh, no. But here's the thing. If he would have just went down the damn rope the first time... He'd been fine. He would have been fine. But no, we came back up for that fucking bird and then went back down and... Yeah, no. That, <laughs> Which, that, again, uh, not well established. No. No, it absolutely convenient. If they had if they had made a little more to do about him uh, being so protective of his bird uh, for the entire movie, you know, where he just, I'm like... 10 years old. ...talks yeah. about his bird and that he loves his bird and he's constantly, you know, <laughs> stroking his bird and... <laughs> I'm glad you said that because I was going to go there. But yeah, no, they mentioned it once in the entire movie until the end when he goes back to rescue the damn birds twice. Yeah. Right. Oh, guys, remember this? Uh, well, just pretend we talked about it earlier. <laughs> do get a fantastic line from Donatello. Ugh, bungee jumping without a cord. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Donatello me. makes light of the fact this guy just died. Yep. yep. <laughs> a very... I know it's a villain, uh... but still. <laughs> I don't think they did that when, like, Shredder died in the first one. Spoiler Well, actually, no. Uh, yeah, they did. Casey. <gasps> Whoops. <laughs> oh, yeah. Crushes right. him and then with he the crushes him. Garbage can. Garbage can. <laughs> I don't know. Let's not, uh, let's not start talking about better movies during this movie. I haven't, actually, I haven't listened to that podcast yet, but I'm excited to because I love that movie. It's pretty great. <laughs> I love that Dead. movie. <laughs> well, you must like the first one then too, because it's yep. basically both movies. It's basically it's the, same the exact thing, same yeah. movie, just a couple of different things. Uh, um, so this, so the turtles are finally scot free here. They've got yeah. their scepter and they're ready Walker's to go back. Dead. But Mikey, we didn't really talk about this too much, but Mikey kind of wants to get down with Mitsu. Yes, which is again disturbing. <laughs> Teenage. Well, here's the thing. They are anthropomorphic. I mean, they are turtles, but they are, you know, human, too. To an extent. Yeah. So, I mean, they have the, the, the legs and arms and movement, I'm guessing, you know, because they have sentience, the thought processes of humans. So could it could it then be posited that he is uh, stuck between two worlds, neither man nor turtle? Yeah, but he's still a turtle. So, needless to say, <laughs> physically, bow chicka bow wow. right? You know, Come but I, 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 I think that if we try hard enough, guys, we can get into the more as the philosophical <laughs> areas of of what it really means to be human, to be man, uh, in regards to this movie, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles three. Again, I just go okay, back so, to bow chicka bow wow. Okay, so Nathan, let's say that you are this Japanese woman. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Are you? Me too. 
Uh, uh, yeah, you're Mitsu, and this bye bye, giant cowboy. mutant turtle is like kind of want to hit that. Well, I'm not talking about it from her st- perspective. I'm talking about it from Michelangelo's perspective, oh where he's neither turtle nor man. He is trans species. He's something. This is the most. This is unfortunate <laughs> for everyone. This is amazing. Come on. I think we've brought up the idea of trans species before, too. In another, I don't know what episode. Uh, I think this is the third time, and just in this one episode. <laughs> You know, well, that, was oh, that was right. interspecies. It was interspecies. I was so trans. We mentioned trans species on something else. So I can't it's interspecies it erotica, fucko. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Yeah. So he wants to stay. She's like, uh, no, I've got like a human guy I want to bang. <laughs> also, uh, yeah, not 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 too many. Not 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 into guys who you know fertilize eggs. But here's nests. the thing: he could. I don't want to get warts. <laughs> If April took the scepter, yep. he would have came back, but Mikey could have stayed there. Just, but the, There the, just would have been a Japanese guy There would have been New some York. random Japanese guy in New York. Yeah. That's that's actually right, because, yeah, April is the one that switched with Kenshin. Yeah. Yeah. So um, they would have just been short one of, one of those emperors or whatever. Emperor guards. <laughs> one of those soldiers. Yeah. 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 Which I don't think um, anyone would have missed. They probably all thought they were dead anyways. True. <laughs> I mean, we've already fucked with the space-time continuum <laughs> at length. Well, who really cares? Yeah. <laughs> then they could have made the fourth one about the turtles going back to Japan to get Mikey out or something. Actually, there's sure. something like that in the TMNT, because then they go get Leo in the jungle or something. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But that they didn't have to travel across space and time to do that. It, it's similar. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> but everybody gets everybody does get back. Yes. Oh. Yeah, but not before a little tease first, though. Right, because they don't think Mikey made it. Yeah, yeah, and so then I... the and oh, he didn't ahead. actually because the uh, the Japanese guy runs away with the scepter, climbs up the climbs up the ladder. Yeah, but Mikey just happened to be holding it, so yeah. <clears throat> but I do have something to say about the, when they come back. Okay, the close. <laughs> because the turtles weren't wearing the uniforms, that's fine, right? But one guy comes back in Mikey shorts. Yes. And, uh, oh my god, what is it, Ken, Kenshin? Kenshin? Kenshin. He comes back in his, uh, normal... Japanese gear. It's not cut. Uh, I did not notice that. <laughs> it was not cut. It was not, yeah. not trimmed so to April was the, specifics. Uh, so they must have filmed that scene, you know, before she cut everything up. But yeah, it, he it comes was back in the shorts. wildly inconsistent. <laughs> oh my god, that's one word for it. It would have been great if one of them, it doesn't matter what character, but they came back and they got their regular clothes back and they were like, eh, it's kind of swampy in here. <laughs> 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 uh, Might as well, I mean, we're cracking jokes about everything, like, just... Yeah. <laughs> yep. Might as well give us a poopy underwear joke. So it must have been from the first thing, because she came over with the Walkman. He yeah. must have been able to bring the shorts with him. Like, yeah, because one person yeah, the can shorts bring went one back, extra I guess, thing, I yeah, guess. it's non-organic material. <laughs> it would have been great if he went back to Japan with the jeans and the leather jacket. <laughs> if oh! they were just like, demon! <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so Kenshin goes back to Japan, and he makes out with uh, Mitsu. And everything's all hunky-dory. Daddy Deerer shows up. Make it awkward. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, so I'm guessing like in Japan what they've done is like they've kind of united them because Norinaga kind of falls to his knees and like bows so I'm not really sure what that what happens I think he's seen the error of his ways yeah okay you know he's because he's, he's sort of the villain but not really right he's just been led astray he's by a tweener the, the filthy Englishman he's a tweener he is the he's Scott Scott Levy of this movie <laughs> <laughs> wow <sighs> If anyone gets that that's not into wrestling, I will be very surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. So, yeah, they're back. The Turtles are back, and uh, Mikey's very upset, but Splinter uh, cheers him up by doing an Elvis Presley impression with the lampshade and also killing his credibility at the same time. <laughs> Which was what? The second or the third time that that joke went on, that movie? Yeah. What, oh, the, 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 Elvis the, Elvis, the Elvis joke. It was a oh, because Mikey did it earlier. Well, I think that's yeah. why Splinter was doing uh, it. Okay. it was well, yeah, the... but it's like, what, was it the second or the third? It was the, that. Would, also... I think that was the second Elvis one. Okay. Also, 1993, the kids love Elvis jokes. Elvis, Blue Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, all the kids were like, "Oh, that's my favorite movie." <laughs> <laughs> what a great reference to make for us. Very, uh, very age appropriate. <laughs> 
Yeah. Elvis in Blue Hawaii. Uh huh. <laughs> That's exactly what he says. Oh, God. So everything is good. Mike is back. We get some more line and, you know, dancing turtles. Yeah, we get some line dancing just as we entered the film. That's how we leave the film. Full circle. Hate Teenage it. Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. <laughs> We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. What Were They Thinking is brought to you by HostGator. HostGator is a leading provider of shared, reseller, VPS, and dedicated hosting solutions. Award-winning support is available 24-7, 365 days a year via phone, email, and live chat. Discover why over 9 million websites trust HostGator. Use the coupon code SCHLUCK for 25% off your first purchase. That's SCHLUCK. S C H L O C K for 25% off your first purchase. What were they thinking is brought to you today by gameitall.com. Whether it's video game news, the latest in music or movie reviews, gameitall.com is your one-stop shop for all nerdy talk. Oh man, all these wrestling news sites are terrible. What's the matter, young lad? Ah, Mother Superior, no, don't hit me. Uh, but- I mean I can't find a good wrestling news site. A good wrestling news site? What's what's so good about a good wrestling news site anyway? Well, I just need a place where I can get all the, the backstage news and rumors and scoop. All right. Don't hit me. I listen. left the orphanage a while ago. All right, listen, Billy's younger brother. I'm not going to hit you this time. Oh, thank you. But I will tell you about a great wrestling news site. Okay. It's, it's, it's not terrible like the last one, right? It's not terrible like the last one. It's called WrestlingNewsWorld.com. You can get all the latest wrestling news, spoilers, results, all the news from all over the wrestling world. That sounds great. No, yeah. it, yes, but you know what? what? It's not going to sound great if you still if you keep up with that mouth of yours. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, again, I left the orphanage a while ago. Uh, if you don't leave, I'm gonna tell my parents. I have legal precedent over 37 states. Get back here! No! Oh, stop hitting me! <laughs> WrestlingNewsWorld.com. So the next movie, if they would have done one, probably just would have been one giant dance montage. <laughs> I hope so. Hour and a half of just the turtles dancing and Splinter with a lampshade on his head. Oh man. So, before we get into our poetry, Nathan... Oh, hold on just a second. What? <laughs> oh, yes, the low haiku, but we'll get to that in a moment. Okay. Whilst watching the credits, or some of the credits anyways, oh, okay. I noticed that there was an actor or somebody involved, I think it was Michelangelo, uh, named Robbie Wrist, for some oh, reason, it... has their yeah. name registered as a trademark? <laughs> yes! The With little, little R, R right? circle, yeah, exactly. That... <laughs> I didn't get that. So, was he played by a product? He I, must have been. Maybe, is, I don't know, man. Is Robbie Wrist, like, a doll? <laughs> <laughs> now in stores. Robbie Wrist. He, was he, like, did he think, did he not understand and think that if he didn't register his name, people could just take it? <laughs> <laughs> I better copyright my name so no one else. <laughs> yeah, I know who I, he I is, right? So no. strange, too. He's Cousin Oliver from the Brady Bunch. Okay. That's Robbie Wrist. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so I can't say I'm super trademark. familiar with that show. I do know it's the story of a lovely lady. <laughs> and a man, and a man named, Brady. named Brady. Right. <laughs> and I think they're raising uh, some children. Right. And uh, they might have a hair of gold like their mother. <laughs> I think the youngest one was in curls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> but uh... anyway... Yeah, it's yeah. We're gonna we're gonna uh, perform some poetry right now. It's time for a little uh, low haiku. Yes, the uh, the low haiku uh, here on uh, what were they uh, thinking? It's um, it's a uh, it's a poetry corner moment for us here. Um, yeah, it's uh, one of our one of our favorite favorite parts. It's it's just, it's really really quite exhilarating. <laughs> Yes, and uh, Nathan, would you like to start or would you like to finish tonight? I, I, I believe I, I, will, I will go second this time. Very well. I just realized I asked you if you would like to finish tonight, and it sounded weird. Kind of, kind of dirty, but it's NPR, so nobody ever notices that thing. So here we go. Uh, low haiku, 17 syllables. Turtles in Japan. Bad time travel science. Bestiality. 
Okay. <laughs> and I don't care how snap? controversial that is. You can yeah, if you want. Am I supposed to like? Yeah, am I supposed to snap now? <laughs> what are we at? A, what are we at? A uh, um, a beatnik bar or something? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it is you know. Poacher eating. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's it's, it's, it's a haiku, right? Yeah, whatever. Instead uh, of clapping. Next up, uh, next up to the stage is uh, Nathan with his low haiku. <clears throat> Turtles, Shogun Three. Time travel is a bad mess. Casey Jones, best part. <laughs> You're not wrong. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Casey Jones, not Japan Jones. <laughs> right, Casey. Yes, modern yeah. Elias Coteus. I wish I would have known about this because I would have came up with something. Oh, God. Oh, it's all good. We don't put the onus on our uh, guests to do this. <laughs> you want a free, if you want to freestyle nope. something right now. No, I'm good. It's 575. All right. It's all it is. I'm not that smart. Okay. <laughs> I just want to say, um, okay, guys, before we get to the Rotten Tomatoes section of our <laughs> podcast, Nathan don't alluded to something that we... Oh, yeah. Nathan alluded to something we have to play Jesus. for you all. And this is... You want me to this set this is, up or do you want to just play you, it? You, you know what? Yeah, just just, just give us a little a little setup for this. Okay. So at the the peak of the popularity for the Ninja Turtles, uh, there was a touring show called Coming Out of Our Shells, which was a, oh. uh, a rock and roll extravaganza. And when I say that, I mean an absolute cash grab with people in turtle costumes uh, pretending to play musical instruments to a, a backtrack. Um, <laughs> while this was while this was happening, uh, they the turtles appeared on the Oprah Winfrey show, and uh, someone had mentioned something about like uh, the turtles and and how they feel towards uh, April. And Michelangelo, uh, again, the audience is filled with parents and their kids <laughs> because the Ninja Turtles are going to be on Oprah. Michelangelo says, I've uh, often broached the subject of a possible interspecies relationship with uh, April. Yeah. So, <laughs> let's listen to the clip. It's, uh, hearing is believing. Here mm-hmm. we go. Guys, let me ask you this. Do you sometimes wish that April was a turtle? Whoa, oh, definitely. Conceptually, that works for me. You know, I'm kind of... <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? Oprah, I'm going to crack myself up. <laughs> Oprah, I've been trying to talk her into an interspecies relationships for months now. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, 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 she, whoa, 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 she can't hold her <laughs> breath long enough. Oh and my. you know what? Yeah. It, as, as fun as the audio is, <sighs> if you get a chance, look it up on YouTube because they actually show the faces of some of the children in the audience while this whole exchange <laughs> is happening. And I, I believe there's a couple who are just like, what is going on? <laughs> they look like they were... T- <laughs> I'm the, I can't even talk because I've got it paused right now and I can see their faces <laughs> and they look like their whole world has just come crashing down <laughs> I don't think I've actually ever seen the clip of it just the audio so oh, I'm gonna have to go home and find yeah. it because that's just all yeah. you all you have to search is TMNT Oprah it's like a 45 second clip and it's <laughs> so glorious yeah, you're gonna have to watch oh. it. The, the, and the, the fun little thing is that that that, uh, that whole coming out of their shells tour thing. Yeah. Uh, the, the shredder, of course, is the villain uh, during the stage show, and uh, he hates music so much so that he sings a song about how much he hates music. Logic <laughs> as, with choreography as and and backing tracks and logic. everything. Yep. It's all logic. <laughs> oh man, as one would. Right. <laughs> yes. So, guys, definitely seek that out. Um, but right now, I want to I want to let everyone know: don't take our word for it. Don't take our word for it. This movie, oh, mm-hmm. the on, on the on the tomatoes. Uh, it's no. not the worst movie we've reviewed, but it's definitely one of the ones yeah. where the critics and the audience are very much in line. Twenty one percent tomato meter with the critics and thirty three percent audience score. Yeah. That seems generous to me. Thirty three so, is very generous. So Nathan, I'll tell. Or I've already told Nathan. I'll tell you. I had an argument with my friend or with my coworker. About how 
three was better than two. Mm-hmm. What do you, what do you think about that? Because we we had an argument for about fifteen minutes. I would have to say the I I I, I would rather watch number two more. However, I will say three has it over two in the fact that the turtles were allowed to use their weapons. Yeah, at least they're not hitting each other with coal cuts. Right. If the turtles had been allowed to use their weapons in number two, it would be the superior movie, one hundred percent, no questions yeah. asked. I'm just However, gonna... the inclusion oh, of Vanilla Ice makes it the better movie. <laughs> Thank you. I'm... If Vanilla Ice was in three, I, w- I would have been fine. Okay. You know yeah. what? I don't really care for either that much. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Well, I know, but we're... <laughs> it's like we're... <laughs> you have to debate. Brendan, which, r- really, w- what's worse? Uh, you know, a-, a-, a turd sandwich or a turd taco? I mean... <laughs> I mean, if you, if I had to choose, I would say this one is worse. Because I will say, yes. this is one of the few movies I I watched for this podcast. I was... And, and that I was, like, consistently annoyed. <laughs> like, just, like... Ugh. Yes. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> oh, yeah. From minute what, one to minute, like, whatever. Felt like 190. <laughs> yeah. Because what did I say to you last night? Uh, it hurt me to watch this movie. <laughs> That's what I messaged Nathan last night. It yeah. hurt me. Yeah. And and I, I, I it does... I, I would say it, it hasn't held up well over time, but as a kid, oh. it didn't hold up well for me to begin with. <laughs> no. It hasn't gotten any better or any worse. It's still mm-hmm. that same level. Yep. Yeah, um, okay, so let's get into these reviews. So, like you said, 21% uh, critics, 33% audience. So, here's the first one. Um, this, is, <laughs> this is my favorite one, because it's just very blatant and to the point. Uh, it's from Stephen Hunter of the Baltimore Sun. <clears throat> really stupid. All right. <laughs> Curt and to the point. Well, I, I, John Hartle from the Seattle Times has one here that says, Less amateurish than the 1990s original. Less embarrassing than its 1991 sequel. False. With its mind-boggling Vanilla Ice Ninja Rap number. Best part of the movie. Agreed. Uh, this may be the easiest installment in the series for parents to sit through. I wow doubt that. I no. disagree strongly yeah. with that. Yes, because even though my dad was like all right all, i gotta take you guys to the movies because you can't go on your own when this when the first one came out i uh, he legitimately enjoyed the first ninja turtles movie mm-hmm. because it was well made it was yeah i mean i like again i don't think i've seen it <laughs> you need to watch it you do my god what you i thinking? feel like i feel like even though you guys are saying it's well made i still feel like any of the three of those movies we could still easily do on this show. You know what I mean? I know. I, I, because, uh, honestly, we could definitely do the second one. Yeah. 100%. Right. Yeah. yeah. Except uh, for Vanilla Ice. Can't mention him. But the... the <laughs> yeah, let's not talk about the biggest part of the movie. The first one is so good. I remember being... As a kid, I, I saw the movie in theaters, and I was like, this is so different than the show, because I was all about the cartoon. But I was... Uh, I was... I think I was... A t- 10 or 11 at the time and uh of course because the movie came out a bunch of the books and stuff got reissued as collections yeah so i bought one of the one of the collections and i'm reading it i'm like oh that was in the movie that was in the movie too (laughs) oh this is really good (laughs) there's you would enjoy the first one you would would hope so anyway really really would because if not i'd have to smack you the next time i see you yes oh that's fair (laughs) Um, this one's from, uh, Leonard, uh, Clady or Clady, I don't know how you pronounce it, but from, uh, Variety, he says, uh, a decided case of diminishing returns. That's, uh, that's understatement of the year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, People Magazine said the conch book and animated incarnations of the turtles remain far funnier and more inventive. Oh, that's a positive review? No, it's a negative one. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Are there are um, there any positive reviews? I have a positive um, review for you. Okay. Oh, wow. This is from Janet Maslin of the New York Times, which this is kind of crazy because she's usually uh, and now you might say, oh, who the hell's Janet Maslin? I see her name all the time when like uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, she's usually one of the top critics. And she's pretty harsh on most movies, so this is crazy. <laughs> it's a positive review. It's not glowing, but she says, The turtles themselves are better-natured than ever, and even nicely mellowed. What? 
They're mellow. I think she's drunk. I, I think that she is, uh, at the time, was probably a parent uh, who didn't get this whole ninja fighting thing. Why does everything have to be so violent? But, or someone, but you know, paid her off. I would, I would argue they're the least mellow in this movie. No. You you need to see the first one, You Brandon. really do. No, it but is, I'm talking about... There is about, a very hard edge in that first movie. I'm not talking about that, though. I'm saying, like, they're obnoxious in this movie. Oh, no, oh, yeah. I don't think that's... I don't feel that that's what she's getting at. It's not the obnoxiousness of their, of their, their delivery and how ham-fisted everything is. I think she's talking about how um, angry the turtles are because Raph is, like hardcore <laughs> pissed off in that first movie. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Uh, but I do have a positive one here. Um, this is from the, from Apollo guide. Uh, Kurt, I will not pronounce his last name because I will murder it. Achieves a degree of grace, goofiness, and agreeability that can often be lost in the serious drudgery of everyday life. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know who you are, but I hate you. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, so that was Turtles Three. Uh, before we go any further, I just want to—I want to thank uh, Dame Malcolm Wallace. <laughs> so nice of you to take time out of your royal schedule. To uh, be I hate you guys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it's been I, fun. I understand you turned down an afternoon with uh, Sir Ian McKellen, so that's very nice of <laughs> oh, you. Jeez. <laughs> and <sighs> yeah. What? Oop. What was that? Oh, my phone's going off here. Yeah, I was hearing okay. things. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, yeah, so I guess we'll, um, before we start, before we plug our stuff, uh, actually, Malco, do you have anything you want to plug? Like what? Like your radio show? Oh, like yeah. Your radio show that you that. have a co-host of? <laughs> well, yeah, uh, co-host of Rope to Rope, which is an well, online radio show about wrestling, independent wrestlers, professional wrestlers, pay-per-views, although don't compare to some people's videos. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're on Twitter at Rope to Rope, Facebook Rope to Rope. That's about it. Where we're can on people it. listen to your show? Uh, rope to Rope dot net and local one hundred seven point three FM. Although we are on a break until March at the moment. Okay, you guys but, playing like retro. Like, I don't know what they're doing. Do you honestly, a, do you have an archive on your website. On our website, download? I believe is the archive, but I'm in the process of archiving all four hundred episodes to YouTube. Okay, excellent. God, right. that's a lot of work. Um, so let's t- we'll, we'll talk about uh, our next movie, a little Hinsky. Well, let me can I can I plug? Well, I would, let me give the Hinsky first, and then we'll okay, plug. fine. Okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> so here's your hint. Um, the next movie we'll be covering, I will say, um, Walker in a half shirt. That's what? It. Walker in a half w- shirt. Walker in a half shirt. Yep. Uh, oh, it's that, probably that, that Chuck Norris Beach Bunny movie that everybody's talking about. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Chuck <laughs> Norris and the Beach Bunnies. <laughs> Playboy Party with Chuck Norris. That's the next one. <laughs> it's so much sex and violence and manliness. <laughs> uh, and running Texas as its own separate entity. <laughs> right. Yeah, so that's your that's your clue, guys. Walker in a half shirt. All right, go ahead. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, well, he uh, he wouldn't be here today to do this uh, because apparently he got into some sort of Twitter war with you, Brendan. I don't know what you're uh, talking about. But uh, uh, Montrose Monkington the Third has sent along to me to say uh, to check out his uh, Facebook page, Montrose Monkington uh, the Third Esquire and Friends. Uh, you can also check out Montrose Monkington TV on YouTube. Uh, the Christmas special. You know what? Christmas has passed, but Little Christmas is coming up, so you're still the right time to watch the Christmas special. Uh, there was also a video that dropped where uh, he was ex- he had a new friend, Shelly, who told him all about Minecraft. And then uh, you can also follow him on Twitter uh, at uh, Montrose the third number three RD uh, on Twitter. So yeah, Montrose Monkington the third, uh, our British monkey pal who is uh, currently fighting with myself and apparently Brendan uh, he was only nice enough to send copy. Thank you. More later. I love that guy. It's a great. Yeah. Here's the thing. I, I find him entertaining. However, oh, as yeah. a person interacting with him, he can be quite rude. Not to me. Well, I have nothing but you know. It's because you're always making out with him. Yeah, that might be it. <sighs> I um, 
I'll plead the fifth on this one, guys. <laughs> My lawyer says it's better if I don't discuss it. Okay. <laughs> you know what? Before I plug, I just want to mention, like, I just saw something right now, and it, it made me, it, it gave me a good internal laugh. We were, when we were looking at the Rotten Tomatoes thing, mm-hmm. um, you know how Rotten Tomatoes says people who like this movie also liked these movies? <laughs> right. Oh, God. Do you know the, did you know the <laughs> ones that are up there? I just want to, I want to read a few of them. <laughs> It says people who liked Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles three might also like Mikhail's Navy, <laughs> Super Mario Brothers. Oh my god! Blues Brothers two thousand, Major League Back to the Miners, Crippendorf's Tribe. Oh my god! And, and I Spy. <laughs> okay, I love all those movies except for the last two. So yeah. <laughs> Basically, any of those could be on our show. <laughs> yes, yes, any of them could I be. I do enjoy Mikhail's Navy for the sole fact Bruce Campbell's in it. <laughs> Wait a second, Blues Brothers 2000 you're on board for? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a terrible... Uh, terrible taste in movies. Terrible taste in movies, yeah. So you can follow us on Twitter at WWTT Podcast. Uh, we're also on Facebook, of course. Just look up What Were They Thinking. Uh, we're on all the podcatchers, obviously. Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, YouTube, uh, Pocket Cast, uh, Al Jazeera Network. Um, human Scent iPod. Human Scent iPod. I always forget that one. Um, it's weird that they're willing to carry all our other episodes too, not well, just it, about Human Centipede. It's not even that. It's the, the the nice thing about the Human Centipede pod one is that they're all the, it chains all of our episodes together, <laughs> so you just watch them from <laughs> Kisser to Keister the oh. entire way through. Oh man, <laughs> I don't think you could have came up with that any better. Oh, Kisser to Keister might be our first shirt, actually. <laughs> <laughs> No illustrations on that one though. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's our that's our stuff. Um again, I'm gonna thank Dame Malcolm Wallace again. Thank you for joining us. Well, mm-hmm. thank you. This has been uh, quite the experience. Yeah, I'm glad you were able to watch Turtles Three again. Um having said that I do have some questions for you, Nathan. Do you now? I do. Okay. Um in a movie mm-hmm. where they decided that, despite it not actually saving money, they uh, they went in a different direction than uh, Jim Henson for the costumes. <laughs> right, right. In a movie where everyone in feudal Japan, every Japanese person in feudal Japan, talks speaks in English to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, in a well, they movie, they were trading with the English at the time. So don't forget. <laughs> right, but to each other. Right. In a movie where Michelangelo thinks that Stuart Wilson looks like Clint Eastwood. <laughs> In a movie that where turtle boners are referenced. And in a movie that just hurt so much. Right. I just have to ask. What's that, Brendan? What were they thinking? It's late, it's time, let's check our cue, baby. Pair it with a couple of brews, baby. We love good movies. We love the bad ones, too. So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you. Oh, yeah. Banna, 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 out. Banna, 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 out. Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one last plot holes a gratuitous boobies It's time to get busy with your friend Stephen Izzy At eilfm.podbean.com Hi, I'm Ellen, and I'm scared we exist in the Matrix. I'm Jaslyn. And I'm bad at ad living. <laughs> and you're listening to High, High Expectations, Expectations, the promo. For our international listeners, you can appreciate our cute New Zealand accents. For our local listeners, you might bump into us in the street three times in the same hour. Our podcast is about pop culture, sexuality, relationships, interesting hobbies, banter, and ragging on each other. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Pocket Casts, Podcast Addict. Or anywhere you might like to find podcasts. Yay, please subscribe. Goodbye. 
Hey, do you like movies? Hey, do you like podcasts? If you do, then come on down and listen to the Home Video Hustle podcast, homie. Hustle, hustle. Every Friday, we talk about whatever movie PJ picks out the bag. What does that mean? Well, every Wednesday on our YouTube page, I pick a bunch of movies at random. Sometimes there's a theme to it, sometimes not. PJ picks the movie up, and guess what? We watch it on Friday. We talk about it for about maybe an hour, hour and a half, whatever we feel like doing. Might give you something good to watch, baby. Come on down every Friday. So come get your hustle on with Home Video Hustle. You can find the show on any podcatcher app, or you can come down to homevideohustle.poppin.com. All of them in one place for you, so you can go ahead and binge it like it's Netflix. We ain't the defenders, yeah. but I like to think we a little bit better than that. <laughs> Come out at your boys, man. Come chill with us. Peace. Peace. Hi, I'm Phil. <laughs> oh. Did, did someone just did someone just <laughs> sign off of AOL? I'm Paul. I really don't have a lot on this. <laughs> oh my god, this is this is rolling off the rails real quick. And I'm Dennis. Dude, I, I am so guys. mixed up today. Just don't even listen to me anymore. And together we are. Well. No, not Voltron. We are Useless Debates in Pop Culture, a weekly... Or we at least try to be. ...podcast that allows you to pick the winner. <laughs> ding, ding. ding. By no means the a lamp. internet lamp. strikes again. Yeah, for sure. We will debate anything. So if you want to hear debates on such useless topics as best Val Kilmer Ooh, role... Tombstone! Tombstone! Or best movie soundtrack... American Graffiti! Or the most successful former boy band member... JT. Then tune into our show. Your podcast is so well named... <laughs> <laughs> you can find us on Apple Podcasts slash iTunes, Podbean, and Google Play. And our website, uselessdebate.com. All right, there we go. Thank God. <laughs>